Father, you heard the hearts cry this morning. Do whatever you want to. Father, I thank you today that your spirit is here and that where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Have your way here today, God. We love you. Shake up the ground. Break down walls today that your word would go forward with the power and clarity. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, come on. And everybody said, come on. Put your hands together. Just give God some honor and a hand clap. Let them know how much you love them this morning. Let them know how much you appreciate them. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. How many glad to be in the house of the Lord today? Come on. I said, how many glad to be in the house of the Lord? Yes, yes. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, thank you. Hey, listen, we're so glad that you're here today, that you have come to worship the Lord in the beauty of his holiness. We believe it is not by accident that you're here today. We believe that God orchestrated it. We believe that God just shut down some doors, and for some of you might be out there, well, it just kind of opened up in my schedule. No, 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 no. God rearranged your schedule so that you would be here today, that God has something amazing that he wants to do in your life, in your heart. He wants to speak to you. He wants to minister to you. He wants to touch you afresh and anew. Amen? So if you're here for the first time, we are so glad that you are here today. Uh, just a few announcements. Um, one, they don't have it on here, um, so I don't know if I wasn't supposed to announce it, but I'm going to anyways. Uh, Jimmy DeMarco is not here, but some of you know Jimmy, and Jimmy takes notes at every service that he is at. And, I mean, he takes pretty thorough notes. If you're out there, and we do the service, you can watch online, but some people are just kind of uh, maybe want some Maybe you can't remember the scripture that I shared or something I shared. We started on our app, and I think it's on the website too. We started a little thing you can click on. It's called Jimmy's Amen Corner. If you're a sports guy, you'll catch that. If you're not, it'll just go right over your head. But Jimmy's Amen Corner. So you can go to the app if you need to get any of the scriptures. I think it's just per week, so you can't go back, at least yet, and go find old messages. But if you're like a scripture and you're like, what, what was that scripture? I can't, I didn't write it down. I forgot. I got caught up. You can go to the app, go to the website, and click on Jimmy's Amen Corner. Um, just uh, some announcements I'm going to go through quick. Uh, young adults and youth group next Sunday, the 18th, 530 at the Shoemaker's. Butch, you going to be all right? I know he's a little under the weather. Is he going to be all right? We're praying. We're praying for him. So uh, young adults next Sunday. There's a lot going on on the 18th. Um, back to school service Sunday, August 18th. One service here. We will have Kona ice. We will have pretzel bites. We have taco in the back. Do we have the other thing? Are we doing it? We're working on it. Stephanie's got some type of Pinterest, uh, TikTok video thing that she wants to use. I'm not doing a dance. Is TikTok just dancing? I'll dance. <laughs> Food. Deep fried. Yeah, peanut butter and jelly. Sorry. First service got me like, wrong. Uh, oh, that's right. John's like, it's going to be a long one today. Where's he at? John, you back here. He's not back here. Uh, uh, oh, I was looking for John, but you come out here. I'll take that. I love it. I'm still doing announcements while you're here. Come on. That helps me. Um, listen, we're going to pray over all the students. Uh, we're going to help uh, bless the teacher. So if you know a teacher, make sure they register. Not only register, make sure they're here Sunday. We want to give them uh, a blessing for their classroom. So, But they have to register. We want to make sure if they just show up and we don't have them register, I mean, we'll figure out a way. But please, we, we would like for them to register. Listen, bring your kids. Make sure your kids are here next Sunday. We're going to anoint them with oil, and we're going to pray for them. But like I said, we have Kona ice, uh, pretzel bites, taco in a bag. Also next Sunday, after the back-to-school service, is our next step. So if you want to get involved, you want to get planted in the house, it's all get, can you give me a little mic, microphone? Um, Sunday, August the 18th, 530 at the Weirton campus. If you can register on the app, that would be a great help to us. Also that weekend, it's a crazy weekend. Um, Impact Kids Back to School Bash, August the 17th 
at the Hublers. Your child will bring information home today. Uh, there's information on the app and the website. You must register for that also. All I know is I had to order some 20 by 11 slip and slide thing in Majigger. So I know they're going to have a great time. It's going to be an awesome time. Uh, August the 17th, more information on that. And the summer services, we're going to be one service at 1030, August 25th and September 1st. Uh, communion available every Sunday in the back. Amen? All right. How many are ready to get into the Word today? Three of you. Come on. We had a great time in the uh, first service this morning. Uh, say it once again, those who don't know, maybe this is your first time here, maybe it's your second time here. Uh, we have two services that we offer. We want to make sure that you get all the Jesus that you possibly can in that Oh, that's where the other one was. Um, did you get all the Jesus that you possibly can? Um, and so we offer two services, 945 and 11. So I had a, uh, a message that's been stirring in my heart. It's been stirring in my spirit um, for a couple months now. And I know last week I gave my title to my message late in the sermon, but I'm going to start off quick with the title. But I want talk to you today, and it might seem kind of a strange title, but allow me some time uh, to hopefully preach this word and something will stir in you. But my title today is Fight for Surrender. Fight for Surrender. And let's pray today. Father, we thank you uh, for your blessings uh, in this house. Lord, we just ask that you would have your way here today. Literally, just do what you want to do today, God. We need you today. And Lord, we understand that we wrestle against not flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. And we know that the enemy always tries to come and distract and disrupt and cause commotion and confusion. But you are the God of peace. You are the God that spoke to the sea when the sea was raging and there was, commun there was confusion and disruption. And you said, peace, be still. And so, Father, we speak peace be still today. We speak the power and the anointing of God today. Lord, I ask that you would strengthen me today. Lord, that I can preach your word effectively today, that it will grab a hold of the hearts of your people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, we, 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 live in a, we live in an interesting time in life. But we live, we live in a world, we, we live in a society, we live in a, uh, a social media age that's constantly, whether it be commercials, whether it be advertisement, whether it be through Facebook or whatever platform of social media you're on, whether it be at work, whether it be uh, friends, whether it would be uh, out and about, uh, going out to eat, going somewhere, that it is always uh, uh, being pushed upon the people to say, you, you always hear, I, I hear this uh, phrase quite a bit. I hear it in the commercials. I hear it in, within social media. But one of the phrases that you hear quite often is, listen to your heart. I know this generation is trying to steal it from my generation, but we coined that phrase into a song way before you ever tried to use it into a phrase is to do whatever you wanted to do in your life, but uh, you'll catch that later. But uh, you hear the phrase, or, and it's being pushed, you know, just listen to your heart. Just listen, just, li just listen to your heart. Or, or you hear this phrase or uh, being pushed in a, a commercial or an advertisement or in YouTube or something. In, in some way, in some form or some fashion, it's be true to yourself. Has anyone ever heard that terminology? Be true to yourself. Or uh, another phrase is, trust your gut. Or feel good, this is a big one, feel good about who you are. Feel good about who you are. Another good phrase is, happiness is what matters. Happiness is what matters. You, you, you need to be happy. That's important that you're happy. They'll, they'll push it and, and push it. The world pushes it. Society pushes it. People 
push it. Uh, uh, you know, always no happy, happy happiness is what matters. Or the, you, I hear this within the uh, 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 talking to people about church or talking to them. Uh, uh, just be a good person. That's important, just as long as you're a good person. And so the world, society, uh, media, uh, 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 um, uh, friends, coworkers, continues to push this, but as followers of Christ, the Bible speaks something completely different. As the world society says, listen to your heart or be true to yourself or trust your gut or happiness is what matters, the Bible says to me, deny yourself. Deny yourself and pick up your cross and carry it. The Bible speaks volumes of denying that the world is pushing. Be happy, be happy. We coined that phrase too, don't worry, be happy. But, but, but be happy, happiness is what matters. And the Bible clearly states to the followers of Christ that you need to deny yourself and to pick up your cross. I, I preached a, a message back during COVID days where I preached a whole message um, with a cross. It was extremely heavy, the whole message. It was like 45 minutes and I preached with the cross on me. And when I left there, I think that I had shoulder problems for so long because it was just so heavy. And, and, and the Bible tells us, deny yourself, deny these things. It's not about just being happy. It's about denying yourself. And pick up your cross. You're going to have to carry some heavy things. The world is saying, trust your gut. And the Bible is saying, it's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that lives in me. And the life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. Amen. Totally different from what the world and social media and friends and relatives are pushing. Hello? Now I think I need to turn down. I'm getting like some feedback. I've been, the Bible says I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified. That means the world pushes about happy, 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 happy. But the Bible says crucify that thing. The world is saying, listen to your heart. But the Bible says to me, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge Him and He shall direct your path. That's completely different from trust in your heart. The Bible tells me in Jeremiah that, that your heart is deceitfully wicked. That not to trust your heart. That your heart will take you down. Oh, I just, I feel, I feel butterflies in my heart. I feel fluffies in my heart. Girl, trust your heart. I know, I've seen him with four other women, but trust your heart. No, trust God. Trust Him. Trust in the Lord. And lean not on your own understanding that there are some things that you will have to walk away from that will not make sense to your heart. There are some people that you have to walk away from that will not make sense to your heart. But God says, trust in me. I will lead you. I will guide you. I will direct you. The Bible says, and, and it talks about happiness, but the Bible tells me, he who endures to the end shall be saved. Endures to the end. That lets me know that those who have been through some stuff, that those who have faced some things, that it's not always just going to be happy-go-lucky within your walk. That there are going to be some tough times. There are going to be hard times. And sometimes God is in those hard times. Sometimes God is in those difficult times. Oh, I don't believe that preacher. Bring, oh, come on, let's go at it, word wise. Joseph was in a pit. Joseph was in the prison. Joseph was forgotten. Joseph was left. And all while it said, God was with him. Job lost everything. But God was with him. Just be a good person. Ephesians tells me, for by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. 
Oh, I'm getting somewhere. Just, just hold on. I had a class at uh, ORU, um, and it was on the book of Romans. And I encourage you to jump into the book of Romans. Now, if you're struggling with Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, don't go into Romans yet. Don't go into Romans, because it, it'll, it'll mess you up. In a good way, but it'll mess you up. But just, you, you need to graduate. You need to graduate if you're going to jump into Romans. You, you better make sure you got a good little foundation. Because Paul wasn't talking to the faint of heart there at Romans. He gets into some stuff in Romans. So if you're still working out that, you know, he's the bread of life and you're still trying to work out some things there, don't jump to Romans yet. Let me give you a little time. We'll give you a little time. I'll, I'll give you a little taste today of uh, some Romans, but, but don't jump all up in, you know, chapter 1, 2, and 3, and 4, and then come back to church and I see your eyes all like. <laughs> I'll know. You, ju you jumped ahead, didn't you? But the book of Romans is, is where I, I want to lay my foundation today. Just want to give you a, just a glimpse today. I want to lay the foundation today, the book of Romans. The book of Romans, just giving you just a, a brief of it, is, is written by the Apostle Paul. It's a letter to the, the book of Rome, or to the church in Rome, which they call Romans. And what I find interesting here in the book of Romans for me there's there's a lot in there there's there's oh man each chapter has so much that you can glean from but that always gets me is Romans chapter 7 because you see a side of the apostle Paul that is that you can so relate to because it is in Romans chapter 7 that we see that Paul begins to open the door that he talks about this fight for surrender in Romans chapter 7. We begin to see glimpses of it. Because in Romans chapter 6, he's talking about that sin shall not have dominion over you. But he opens this door in Romans chapter 7 that I'm like, I just, you get in it and, and you just can, you'll just sit in there. You're like, just kind of like, whoa, whoa. Because he says something in Romans chapter 7, verse 15 is where I really want to jump in. But Romans chapter, oh, my. I want to say this. Some days of pastoring are extremely difficult. And the enemy will just do everything in his power. But thankfully, I told my wife, knowing, did I not say? I said, honey, I'm going I'm to bring my Bible today. I'm bringing my word today. Romans chapter 7. I don't know what's going on with the screen, and I'm not even worrying about it. Can I preach today? And I'm not frustrated. So don't go, oh, Pastor, frustrated. No, I'm not frustrated. Listen, I, I, I preach to screaming kids and people jumping over things. I, I just do what God's called me to do. I preach to people. I preach to 2,000 people. It don't, it, don't, it don't shake this whippersnapper. <laughs> Romans 7, verse 15. I just wish uh, Jimmy will have notes. He was at the first service, so you might have to jump on Jimmy's Amen Corner. And find out where I'm at because they won't have it up here. But you really, I, I need it up there because you really would just grab a hold of it. And it's going to take a minute to get there. But in Romans chapter 7, verse, I said, I'll, scream, I'll preach over screaming kids. This one says, I'm going to take you to the hill on that, homeboy. <laughs> oh, I got it. <laughs> Romans 7, verse 15 for the 20th time. Y'all there? If not, that's all right. But I, I like to read it. I'm reading from the New King James Version, but the New Living Translation. You have the New Living. Let me read it from the New Living Translation. Because it just says it so much. It just says it like. But Paul saying, he starts off in Romans chapter 7, verse 15. <laughs> he says, I don't really understand myself. 
That's how he starts it in verse 15. Like, like, dude, I could so relate to you. This is what he says. He says, I don't really understand myself. For I want to do what is right, but I don't do it. Instead, I do what I hate. I don't really understand my, I, I'm like, Paul, I got you now. I didn't get you in chapter 6 about demen, you know, sin not having dominion over you. But I got you. I got you. I understand. I don't understand myself either. But he's almost talking about a war or a fight. Let me say this. He's almost talking about a fight between two people. Because he's saying over, I don't understand myself because he's like, I'm over here. The things that I should be doing, I don't do. But, but, but the things I, I should do, the things I shouldn't be doing, I do those things. He's using the imagery of two different people in the battle between these two. Let me, can I go a little further in this? Paul is going to take a little time. So if I get a little repetitive, just bear with me. Because Paul, Paul's, Paul goes into something here. And he's talking about this battle between two. He's like, I don't understand myself. Like, I should be going to church. I should be praying. I should be reading. I should be doing these things. But I didn't do it. I got on my phone. I got on TikTok. I, 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 I watched it. I, why? 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 I, you know, and, and then the things that, 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 that I, I should be doing, I, I did that. I shouldn't have been on TikTok for 45 minutes. He's like, but I got this, I got this battle. I got this battle going on between these two. Who are these, these two that he's kind of referencing? Paul references these two four times in the New Testament. And I know you're all on the edge of your pews right now. I wonder, who are these two? Please tell us, Pastor. We can't hold it any longer. Please share us. What is he talking about? Who is this fight? Who is fighting? Are they meeting at 3 o'clock out by the buses out there or what? He's referencing the old man and the new man. He said there's, there's a battle, and he references it all throughout the New Testament four times where he specifically uses those two terminologies. But he doesn't always say it when he's talking in Romans, but he's referencing that there's an old man and that there's a new man. Give me a moment, and let me just kind of walk through this a little bit. He references a new man because he's talking here in Romans chapter 7. He's talking about the things I should be doing, I do, right? And he's talking about there's this war going on between these two. Somebody shout new man. This, this new man, this new man, this new man is under, under the umbrella. And I'm going to give you a, a big uh, Oral Roberts University word here. And you can bust it out on your friends. But it's under the umbrella. New man is under the umbrella. This is a fancy word for new man. It's called regeneration. Regeneration. And, and regeneration is basically what it's saying. Is it's getting rid of the old and taking on the new. It's called being born again. Let me say this. New birth. He's saying, he's saying here that, 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 that one in John chapter 3, he says, what, what must one do to enter the kingdom of God? And Jesus says, one must be born again. In John chapter 3, you can read that. If Romans 7 is too much for you, then stay in Romans 3, or John chapter 3. And, he, and he's talking about being born again. And this is what he's talking about. It goes a little further into this. He, he references new man in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. 
So he's, he's referencing this regeneration. This regeneration is saying that I'm getting rid of the old and I'm taking on the new. Can you give me an amen here today? He said, if anyone be in Christ, he's a new creation. And, and, and so I want to sit this new man, this new man. I, I'm taking it a little bit deeper than what he's talking about there in Romans. He's saying it without necessarily saying it. But he's telling them that there's this battle between this new man and this old man. He says, I have, let's, let's, let's put it this way now. Rather than using the, 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 the old man and the new man, let's say, he said, I, I'm dealing with the, the, the regeneration part of me. And then I'm not going to get into the old man yet. But I love this word regeneration. Because if you really try to get like fancy preacher on you today. Regene oration. Regene oration. Regene oration. Regene. Somebody shout Gene. I'm not talking about your high school buddy. And I'm not talking about your blue jeans. I'm talking about genes or what are passed down that tell us what we're going to look like. How tall we're going to be. Or what color our eyes are going to be. But here's a thing about genes. Not only are physical traits passed down through genes, but even personal traits, our demeanor, our attitude. And as my wife says that Noah has got this beautiful gene from me, our sense of humor. When the teacher's call, she just said, hey, he got it from his father. <laughs> this witty sense of humor. But just as good characteristics can be passed down, so can negative characteristics. Depression, addiction, low self-esteem. But God is saying here that when you get grafted in me, when you get grafted in me, when you, as John was singing the song, when you say do whatever you want to, God says I will regene you. So I'm here to tell you whether this is your first time here or whether this is your fourth time here, you cannot stay the victim in this house. You, you, you cannot, you cannot say the victim in this house, you will get so uncomfortable, you will get so, uh, uh, you, you will move from pew, your pew, and, and you'll be like, well, maybe it's just too loud, and I said up front, no, no, it's the Holy Spirit getting a hold of you, because the Spirit of the living God, if God is in you, and you've accepted Him into your heart and into your life, then that means you have been regened, and if you have been regened, that means that I don't care where you come from, I don't care what side of the tracks you grew up on. I don't care what system in life has failed you. I don't care if the school system failed you. I don't care if the government system failed you. I don't care if they told you you're never going to be anything. I don't know who told you if you're ex, ex-husband, ex-wife. I don't care if you were caught up in some freaky deaky type stuff. I'm here to tell you God has regened you. And if he says you've been regenerated... Your family might say, well, nobody went to uh, college in our family and nobody's ever been able to get a house or a loan in our family or no one's ever able to prosper in our family. What they don't know is that you attend Impact Church and because you're at Impact Church, God has regened you and now your genes are not poor, broke, busted and disgusted. My genes that I'm blessed in the city, I'm blessed in the field, I'm blessed when I come, I'm blessed when I go go my genes tells me I'm I feel like preaching up in there I don't know what this mic's doing I don't know what all this is doing but I feel I'm gonna preach all through it here today I'm here to let you know that you are victorious you are no longer the victim 
Your gene says you're an overcomer. I am a product. I am a product. I stand here today not just giving you a fancy word that you could go and be like, oh, yeah, we talked about regeneration today. But I'm a product of someone that said, I'm going to be regenerated. See, 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 my mama, mama my, I know my mom ain't going to care that I share this. But, but Gene, but Gene's right. It, 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 it tells you what you're going to be. Scientifically, it tells you this is what you're going to be. My mom grew up in an alcoholic home, so the genes should be she's going to be an alcoholic. Grew up in abuse, so that means she's going to be abuse. Grew up poor, that means she's going to be poor. Never graduated from college, so that's what her, that, according to science, according to science, my mother should be mentally unstable, should be living up under a bridge, according to science, should be an abuser because she was abused, should be a hot mess because she grew up in a hot mess, but with God, but with God. I'm here today because my mom says, no, it's stopping here today. It is stopping now. When you get grafted in him, when you, when you get grafted in him, I don't know if you got my mama. Mama, stand up. Let them know how awesome you are. Let them see how bad you are, mama. And I'm here to tell you. She went, not only graduated high school, graduated college, and went to graduated nursing school, became, worked over here, raised three kids that went to college, are able to do. Mama's got her right mind all together, loves the Lord, loves God. For something happened. <laughs> By coming to church is not just coming to church. You coming to church can change the trajectory of the whole lineage of your family. There can be a regeneration that can take place. There can be a whole regeneration that can take place. And so Paul's talking about this. He's talking about that. I, I'm, I'm, this, I'm this new person. I'm, the, I'm, I'm this new person, but, but, this, but this new person is fighting this other person, which is referenced as the old man. The old man is theologically syn synonymous with the word flesh. Somebody shout flesh. I'm not talking about the, the, on your skin, the flesh. But the Bible references as the lust of the flesh. Corinthians, even Paul writing to the church of Corinth and Corinthians says, y'all need to cleanse. He didn't say y'all, but he might have said yens. He <laughs> says, y'all need to cleanse yourself from the filthiness of your flesh. And Paul understands this old man because if you don't understand Paul's past, then you're not going to understand this text. Because Paul was a persecutor of the church. That when they were to stone Christians, torture Christians, boil Christians, you read it in Hebrews. They talk about it. They they would put uh, uh, animal. Uh, they would put sinew on animal sinew on on Christians, and they would send them into a, a, a thing and allow the lions to devour them. 
And Paul was in charge of this. You say, what do you mean Paul was in charge? Because the Bible says that when they were stoning one of the disciples, that they took the coat and laid them at Paul's feet. Now, most people just read past right past that, but that man, Paul was in charge. That Paul was running this thing. So now we begin to understand as we see what Paul now, he's a writer of two-thirds of the New Testament. We understand what the new man is, but now we're beginning to understand what the old man is. And Paul is, is, is struggling here. Paul is talking about in Romans chapter 7. He's like, listen, there, there, there's a battle. There, there's a fight because I want to be this new man. I want to be, let me put it this way, a good Christian. Do you see how I put little parentheses things? I, I want to be a good Christian. I, I want to do right. I want to say right. But yet I have this old man here. I have this fleshly desire. And these two are waving these two are warring against each other. He even goes deeper into it. And in Romans chapter 7, verse 24, he says this. Romans chapter 7, verse 24 says, O wretched man that I am, who will deliver me from this body of death? Oh, snap. Who's going to deliver me from this body of death? Now, most of the time you just read that, okay, yeah, who do you mean? It's going to deliver you from this. But what Paul was referencing this body of death is that a form of capital punishment that they would do back then, and, and Paul knows all about this, a, a form of capital punishment is that they would take, uh, somebody commits a murder, a criminal commits a murder. They would take that body, the dead body, and they would tie it to the criminal. And that was their form of this capital punishment that slowly as the dead body is decaying, that the decay, the stench, the nastiness would seep into the criminal causing a slow death in their life. And so they would have to go around. Hey, Jonathan, can you, can you bring George out? And so what Paul was saying here, Paul, Paul was saying, Paul was referencing, who's going to deliver me? From this wretched body, that's what he's talking about, the terminology that they could understand. He was saying, listen, this old man is still linked to me. And what is happening is that this old man and the things of my past and the hurt and the shame and the regret is seeping in to the new man that I'm trying to become. I'm trying to serve God and I'm trying to do what he's called me to do. And I know I got a plan and I know I got a purpose. But Paul is at this moment, he says, there's a fight between these two. There's a battle between these two. This old man here, this old man here, and then the new man that I'm becoming. And, and the hurt and the dra drama from my past is still seeping into my life. If you're out there and, and maybe, maybe you're on the brink of divorce, don't sign a paper yet. Don't sign a paper yet. Don't, don't save your money. Don't go to the lawyer. Don't go to the lawyer until you listen to this message today. Because I find with talking to people, usually 99% of the time. Well, Pastor, we just fell out of love. We just, we, just, we just fell out of love. Take a minute, and I'm wondering if George hasn't seeped in to your marriage. Well, we've been married for so long. Yeah, but sometimes what we can do as Christians, because we have to put on a facade in life, we have to look a certain way. We have to say, oh, yes, I have all my junk together. When you don't have your junk together. 
And then if you're not really grafted in the house of the Lord, some people take it, well, he's just a turner burner, or he's a holy roller preacher, or he's just going, no, 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 it's not that. It's trying to get you because George is seeping, I can see George seeping into your life. And sometimes we get this, we get this, we get this thing, we'll, we'll dress it up. Honeymoon phase, it's dressed up. Second year of marriage, it's, it's, it's there. You, you seen, you seen something, you weren't, whoa, whoa, but then it disappeared. It disappeared like, oh, oh, okay, maybe, I'm, I just think it's too much. Oh, I love you, baby. My boo-boo, my boo-boo. And then you start going year three and four, and then all of a sudden, here comes old man seeping up. Year one, you would communicate. Year four, now you're telling each other, shut up. I didn't love you. I didn't care for you. Now you communicate because year one, but now then all of a sudden, oh, now... It starts, oh, I better go. I better go for the sake of time. It begins to seep up. And Paul is saying that my old man, this old man, this wretched man that I was, I was a, a murderer of Christians. I, mean, I, was, I was, pardon my English, is the only way I can use it. I'm from West Virginia, Hooverson Heights. I was screwed up. And that's what Paul was saying there in 7. He said, I don't even understand myself. But then he goes further and he's like, now I'm, oh no, now I know why. Because the old man is trying to seep in to the new man. And so now, now he's teaching something to the body of Christ that we don't, there's a fight a fight for surrender. Let me, let me, let, let, can I, do, I got a few minutes? I, I figure if it's quiet, that means it might be good. I don't know if you're still thinking about the projector or not. The devil isn't concerned with fighting something you're doing. He fights who you're becoming. And Paul is beginning, I guess a hand clap meant that was good. Let me say it again then. The devil isn't concerned with fighting something you're doing. He's fighting who you're becoming. And Paul, a writer of two-thirds of the New Testament, Paul, the one who is vocal now, who's leading the charge, is now saying, man, I, 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 got, I, got, I got problems. And the problem is, is that this old man is seeping. Imagine a dead body tied to you. The stench. Like, we can't even handle the stench if you're driving down on uh, 22 and you pass a, a, a dead deer on the side of the road that's been hit by a car. Like, oh. Or you run over a skunk or somebody ran over a skunk. You're like, oh. Imagine that thing tied to, but that's how your past is. That's how your hurt is. That's how secrets are. The world says, hide them, hide them, hide them, hide them. And, and George loves when they stay hidden. Because you know why? George loves darkness. New man wants light. George loves darkness. George, no, keep those secrets. Keep that hidden. Keep that addiction hidden. Keep that mess hidden. Keep it, keep it, keep it what you've been peeping on hidden. Keep, 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 keep it hidden that those that are sliding into your DMs. I learned that from the kids. And I was like, Dad, who's sliding into your DMs? I'm like, huh? <laughs> Paul is showing that you have to fight to find your identity in him. That my identity is that I'm the head and not the tail above and not beneath. That I am victorious in Christ Jesus. 
So we're talking about this new man, but let's jump into the old man just for a second. Let's, let's talk about George just for a second of how we, can, how we can get rid of George. Because George is affecting my finances. George is affecting my finances. George is affecting my finances. You might be lost, but George will affect your finances. Because you don't know your identity in Christ. You will put money, you will put stuff into things to try to find your identity and looking for things. Well, this will fix it and this will fix it. And well, if I get this and this will fix it. Well, if I put it in over here and you're still empty. And so George will affect your finances, he'll affect your marriage, he'll affect your mental health, he'll affect, he'll, 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 he'll affect everything. How do we get rid of George? I want to give you another big word. I'm almost through. I want to give you another big word. The church doesn't talk about it, but it's actually mentioned 22 times in the New Testament. So I figured if it's mentioned 22 times in the New Testament, that it should be something we should gravitate to. Correct? It is the word sanctification. Sanctification. Sanctification is the process of being set apart to make holy. So Paul, Paul is saying this in Romans. He's talking about this regeneration without mentioning the word regeneration. And he's talking about sanctification without talking about sanctification. Sanctification is being set apart to become holy. He says, I'm trying to, I'm trying to separate myself from this old man is what we're referencing according to Paul. He doesn't say it in Romans, but he says, I'm trying to separate myself. I'm trying to separate because, because, because I'm battling this old man. The new man. The new man is telling me to, to love my coworker. But George is telling me to slap that coworker. <laughs> the new man is telling me to love my spouse. The new man is saying you can find somebody better. The new man is saying no, no. What God has joined together, let no man put asunder. Old man is saying, you can find somebody new. I'm here to tell you. And Paul is wrestling with these thoughts because he even says it. Do I got to read it again? Romans 7 verse 15 is saying here, for what, for what I'm doing, I do not understand. For what I will to do, I do not practice that. But what I hate, that I do. He's like, I'm so jacked up. I need somebody to come along and help me get rid of this. Are y'all still with me? They got quiet. I didn't know if I missed my, my time. So how do I, how do I separate? Because that's a whole lot. And I, I taught you last week that, that the, the, the Bible is the, the numbers and the chapters and the titles are just there for us to read. But actually, when they're penning, they're penning it like, like it's, it's, a, it's not a story, but it's, it's a letter. Like you're getting a letter in the mail, and he's, he's throwing this in there. And so he's talking about, man, I'm, I'm so messed up. And, and then he goes into verse 24, and he says, oh, wretched man that I am, who's going to deliver me from this body of death? Who's going to deliver me from this thing that I've been carrying around that's seeping into every avenue of my life? And then he goes down into uh, verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. And then it goes through and then he starts talking about condemnation. Oh, I, I ain't got time for that right now. He starts talking about condemnation. That therefore is now no condemnation. And he's still penning it. But then he just straight to whoop boom Because he goes into verse 5. Romans chapter 8 verse 5. And it says this in Romans chapter 8. For those who live according to the flesh... Set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. What are you saying? It's just a basic biblical principle, maybe a 
just a regular earthly principle, I guess you say. Whatever you feed is going to thrive. So Paul was just like, listen, you, you feed the flesh, you feed the old man. The old man is going to flourish. But if you feed the spirit, the spirit will flourish. In other words, he's saying, don't eat at the enemy's table. Now I know what you're thinking. The enemy's got a table? Yes. Why has the enemy got a table? You got The enemy counterfeits everything God does. Hence, I'll just go ahead and use old pop culture here. I don't even know if it's called pop culture. The Olympics. What did he do? What happened at the Olympics? What is everybody talking about? To try to get everybody in an uproar? Counterfeit. You need to shake me. So I serve a God that cannot be shaken. But he counterfeits. He just does. Did he not say that in the last days, there are, many will come to me and say, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not cast out demons in your name? Did we not do miracles in your name? And he's going to say, depart from me. I never... What's that mean? You're a counterfeit. You're a counterfeit. You didn't, you didn't know the genuine. And he says, I will, Psalms 23, I'll prepare a table before you in the presence of your enemies. Oh, he gets mad. He gets jealous. That's just how he is. Because you look in Isaiah, he says, I can be God. I can be God. I can run things. I can do this. Now he sees Psalm 23, oh, God's got his table and he's going to prepare a table. I'm getting my own table. Sure enough, I am. All right, Jonathan. And so he gets his own table, and this is how we'll just reference him as George. Sounds like me when I wake up cracking and popping. Thank you. And so George thrives. On darkness. George thrives. On brokenness. And so George is 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 there's probably a better word, but I'm just gonna say this word, his goal. But I got a thought of a better word for YouTube. But George, George's goal, since I'm tied to him, for here, well, we got lies, right? And George is always reaching. Take the lies. Take the lies. Take the lies. Take the fear. Take the fear, the depression, the shame, the guilt, the regret. And as more as you begin, that, like, yeah, you know what? I am a disappointment. You know what? You know what? You know what? I don't know. I, 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 didn't, I didn't think I, I was ugly, but he said, he, he said I was ugly. So I was fat and ugly. I just wanted that to sit there for a second. I wanted to let that permeate. Because there's somebody out there, maybe not here at Impact Church, but there's somebody out there, whether they got a gun, whether they got pills, whether they got something, and just those words, fat and ugly. And George does not care. He walks in darkness. And he just begins to feed confusion. Confusion. I know we don't talk about this much in the body of Christ, but those that are sexually confused, especially a younger generation, 
And I know a lot of people say, oh, you know, you're trying to, this has nothing to do with being political or pushing something. This is life and death. And George does not care. He will. He will say, you know, you begin to question yourself. You begin to question, well, maybe, 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 maybe I'm not, maybe, maybe. Maybe, I, I don't know. And what we say, the world pushes, be happy. Well, I, can I preach for a second? Can I just, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I can pack my junk up and I can move down south if y'all, if y'all don't. I mean, I can go sit on the beach, but I got to preach what I got to preach. And well, may, maybe, maybe, maybe the, the world tells us I, I have to be happy. The world tells me I, I have to be happy. And may, maybe, maybe, maybe I do. Maybe I do like guys. And George will say, yeah, yeah, eat at that table. It begins to seep through and begins to seep through and the confusion comes and addictions come and the hurt and the pain. And George is like, I'm winning, I'm winning. And this is what Paul was talking about. Paul says, no, you have to fight for it. And our problem in the body of Christ is that we think if we have the thoughts or if you have the urge, then God does not love you, that God does not care for you. But that is a lie. The problem that happens is when you act on those things you you will have a thought listen to me young people I know the world is pushing that you should go this way and you should go that way and you should be happy and you should run this way and maybe you've had a thought and maybe you thought maybe that's the way and then all of a sudden you're like God's gonna kill me no God is teaching and showing you will have thoughts George will seep in and bring thoughts it's when you act It's when you act on those thoughts and you say, what, what do I do, preacher? What do I do? I have these thoughts, these videos, these TikToks, and they, it's promoted and it's pushed. And, and it's, not just, it's not just guys hooking up with guys. It's people just kids sleeping with other kids. Fourth graders fooling around with each other. Hooking up in the bathroom of the school. You're like, what, 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 do, I, what do I do? This is what? It's a fight. This walk is not easy. I don't get why some struggle. I mean, just struggle with some stuff. And some don't. But I do know this much. Everyone has a fight. They just do. Everyone has a fight. I got a fight. I fight. Depression. Every day. It's not like I, I want to go and and jump off the bridge. But the thoughts come. Get up and preach in front of a couple of people and see what kind of thoughts come. Why would you say that? That's what I'm saying. This is what this. Yeah. Why would you tell those people that? Now they're going to look at you all funny. Now they're going to think, oh, they're a pastor. He's so jacked up. I am. That was a terrible message. You know, I'd be better off if you weren't here. Now your fight not might be my fight, but that, that's, my, that's my fight. I didn't, I didn't grow up in a, in a perfect household. So just talking to my kids at times, and I'll go back like, oh my goodness, I am such a jacked up dad. <laughs> but it's a fight. I don't know what your fight is, but, but I guarantee you got a fight. You know why I know you got a fight? Because Paul had a fight. And Paul was like, Paul seemed like he had his stuff together. 
But it comes a time. And what I mean by the fight, there comes a time that the lies come. It's, not, it's just not acting on the lies, but there comes a time where you just say, <laughs> there comes a time. We good? We good? I didn't, I didn't know how far it went. There comes a time that you have to dump the table and say, you know what? I'm not feeding this anymore. And I, and I, I wish, I wish, I wish, listen to me, I wish that this would be the message and you would go home and you're like, There's still a fight. But he says, if you feed the flesh, but he says, feed the spirit. So my table, my table has to be, my table has to be this. My table has to be Bible study, right? My table has to be the word. Prayer card, my table has to be prayer card, praying for people. Church, that was the offering. Ushers, that remind me of ushers. Serve, but I want to end with this. John, go ahead and play something. I want to, I want to share something with you because I say all that. When we're talking about serving, talking about praying, talking about Bible study, talking about these things. And it's, it's not a, a push, a shameless plug, as they would say. But in regeneration, on the genes what are passed down for generation to generation and I did some research on this and I'm ending with this I promise recently researchers have discovered something that they call it and I think I might pronounce this wrong epigenetics this word means on top of the genes what they found is just because a gene has been passed down doesn't mean that it has to be activated. This, hey, this is scientific right here, boy. It doesn't have to be activated, watch. It can be affected by your decisions, your environment, and your experiences. They're trying to catch up. Science is trying to catch up with what God's already done. What God already said. He's like, I knew that. You can change it. I don't care what an ex says. I don't care what a teacher said. I don't care what the lawyer said. I don't care what the uh, attorney said. I don't care what they said. I don't care what, you know, uh, co-workers are saying, I don't care what family reunion people say. God's got a plan. God's got a purpose. But with that, George wants to seep in. So I want to pray for you today as, as, as ushers, you can come forward. I want to pray for you today. If you would, stand to your feet. I want to pray for you today. And what I want to pray, I want to pray something just a little, little, little different. I want to pray for those today, and I'm just going to do a corporate prayer. I don't want to embarrass anybody. I want to pray for those that are walking in shame. There's a difference between conviction and shame, and they're not on the same road. Shame is saying I can never come to the Father. Conviction is... I'll bow to the Father. I want to pray for those shame, guilt. I, I want to pray for those that have been beat down by the church. That we use religion and tradition and to beat you down. I want to pray for those today that are confused.
I want to pray for those that, it, let's just be, let's just throw it out there. We threw it all out there today. Let's just throw it all out there now. I want to pray for those that you come to church and you lift your hands, but George is still seeping into you, even at church. Mm. And you're trying, and you're fighting, and you're fighting. I want to pray for you today that you keep fighting. You keep going. You don't allow the old man to win. Father, we come before you today, and I pray for those that are battling shame. I pray for those that are battling regret. I pray for those that are battling guilt. I pray for those that had just been beat down by maybe misinformed people that have used scripture the wrong way, not with love, but has used it as a way to control and manipulate people. But you're a God of love. And that the Holy Spirit comes. And we ask that the Holy Spirit would come for those that, that are battling uh, that are battling this old man, that have, that have a fight, Lord, that, that they will fight, that they will keep on fighting, that they will fight for surrender. That they will fight. That even with the, the guilt and the shame, and those who think they liken their father unto their earthly father, your heavenly father is not like your earthly father. Those who've had a bad relationship. He's here today. He loves you. He cares for you. He has a plan for you. He has a purpose for you. And he wants to heal those areas in your life. One reference they use of, of God is that he's the healing balm of Gilead. That he will heal those broken pieces of your life. Father, I pray for strength today. I pray for those that are in the fight, been in the fight. And I preach, I hear you. I've been in the fight for the last five, six years. Keep fighting. Keep fighting, keep coming to church, keep serving, keep worshiping, keep glorifying, keep fellowshipping, keep getting around the right people. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you gotta keep going. You gotta keep going. Because at, at some point, old George, he will just, you won't hear him. You won't hear him as much. We do live in a fallen world. We love you, Father. We ask that you will bless each and every giver today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, ushers. The ushers are going to go around. Listen, put your prayer cards in there. We want to pray for you. We believe. If you're struggling, write it on the prayer card. We're going to pray for you. We're not going to tell people about it, but we're going to pray for you and believe that God is able to do exceedingly and abundantly in your life.